This is That Saints Pod. You got me, the Patty V. We got Big Easy Nation over here, Mr. Jacob himself. How are we feeling yeah. tonight, man? I'm pretty good. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Another edition of That Saints Pod. We had the Carolina Panthers last week. Big victory there, 47 to 10. Feeling really good after that one. We're going to get to that. We're going to kind of recap that game a little bit, and we're going to get to next week's game against the Dallas Cowboys. I say next week. It's already Thursday. We had a hurricane roll through. We're a little behind. Hopefully, the Saints preparation is not a little behind for that game. But, uh, but yeah, so we're going to talk about that a little bit, and then who knows? Who knows where it goes, right? I have another podcast called Who F Knows. It's kind of my nature, so maybe we'll get off the rails here, but uh, we're off to a hot start. How are we, yep. how are we feeling about, about last week's game, man? Pretty good. Pretty yeah. good. I mean, the offense looked really good. You know, kind of wasn't expecting to get that hot. Yeah. Right off the rip like that. But, you know, last year, people were like, oh, it's the Panthers. But right. last year's team wouldn't have put up 47 points. Yeah. Yeah. So against go ahead. Carolina. No, you're good. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. I didn't know. I didn't know. If you, no, you're good. I didn't want to cut you off. Uh, yeah. I was going to say, so talk about that. Talk about that a little bit. I mean, I think that's the first question coming out of coming out of that game. You know, it's, it's interesting going in. You had a lot of like national media saying, oh, watch out for the Panthers. They could really beat the Saints yeah. and they could be a team to watch, you know, uh, Bryce Young's second year and blah, blah, blah. And then they get blown out and everybody's like, oh, it's just the Panthers. So you know, what's your take on that? Well, I mean, offense, you know, was in sync. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Offense was in sync. You're right. Yeah. Offense was in sync. They looked great. The uh, the motion was there. That was the thing, yeah. right? It's it's interesting. You think uh, you think to last year. Uh, I think Nick Underhill tweeted something that made me just kind of laugh to myself because he's like, "This year's offense just makes sense." That's not. I'm paraphrasing. That's yeah. not exactly what he said, but it was something along those lines. He's like, "Last year you kind of be scratching your head. This year, even when they do something that doesn't work, at least it makes sense." And I think that that was my first yeah. takeaway from this game. It's like, hey, the offense looks like a real offense, right? Kind of like what I was saying, like last year, if our same team that we had with with Carmichael, with Carmichael, yeah. yeah, yeah, we would have put up forty-seven. Oh heck, against no. them, they would probably put up like twenty. Yeah. No, I was explaining that to to people I was with. I was like, listen, last year at this time, you know, it's, it's probably a seven to three game. All the formations that they were using, it's got kind of get you pretty excited for the season. Like, you know, what what do the what can they do? Yeah. You know? Yeah. And you're probably just scratching the surface, right? Listen, you come out of that game, uh, offensive line looked phenomenal. That was a big question mark for me going yep. into the game. It's like, Hey, how, how well can Kubiak hide some of these things? And it turns out pretty dang well, uh, coming out. He of, was rated, I think the best play caller. Yeah. Yeah. So Kubiak. Best offensive play caller. Kubiak was rated, uh, I forget what the rankings are, right? There's so many rankings these yeah. days. There's the people, and you can pull stats from anywhere, right? I, but I'm going to choose the ones that I like right now. And Kubiak was uh, ranked the number one play car, caller in the NFL coming out of week one. Also, uh, the offensive line was ranked the number one offensive line coming out of week one. And Trevor mean, Penning looked pretty good. Penning yeah. looked nasty. I'm, yep. I'm going to choose that word. A lot of people are talking about Fawaga, rightfully so. Pinning uh, comes out the gates, man. Uh, there, there was two separate plays where I watched him block a guy into two other guys and effectively take out three guys. And when you're playing uh, eight on 11, what's the math there, uh, right? You take out three guys, uh, your odds are pretty good. You're yeah. going to get a good game. Talking about Dallas, you got Micah Parsons, you know. Yeah. He's going to cover him. It's going to be uh, Frog if he's healthy or pinning. Yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll definitely get to that. I want to talk about that for yeah. sure. Um, just, just stick into the, to the Panthers game a little bit here. Were you surprised at how well the offense, like how good the offense looked, how well the offense meshed? It looked like they got a lot of different guys in there. I think I personally was expecting maybe Kamar to have a good game, like a big game, not mm -hmm. a good game. He had a good game. Um, but it looked like everybody had a good game, right? Yeah. It didn't look, it didn't matter who was in there. It just it looked like, like you try not to get too excited. It's week one. Yeah. It's a Panthers, but. You know, you look at the potential, you're like, oh, wow. You know, we could be really good this year. Yeah. But you don't want to fall into the same trap of, yeah. you know, oh, we were really good week one and then. Yeah, for sure. So, so but, let's, let's recap that, right? We're talking about week one. Let's recap a few, a few things. You give me your top two takeaways from that game. I'll give you my two top two takeaways from that game. And then from there, we'll talk about maybe a negative or two that came out of that game. So give me your top two takeaways from, from week one. Talk about the defense too. The defense was hit on all cylinders. You know, special teams, defense, offense, they're all clicking. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of special teams, I mean, your boy Groupie, uh, he didn't miss a field goal. And he yeah. had a couple long ones. So, yeah, I mean, hey, shout out to him. And Juwan Johnson got a blocked punt. Yeah. That's kind of. Yeah. Still don't know if our punter can punt, though, because our offense yeah. was so damn good. <laughs> he only had to punt one time, I think. 
Yep. Uh, yeah. What a, what a, what a game. Uh, yeah. I think my two takeaways, number one, week one, I said, listen, Derek Carr has to be the MVP of this offense. Now granted they're doing a lot of things right. That are making Derek Carr have like, it's, it's easier on Derek Carr. Derek Carr looked phenomenal. Oh, okay. Look phenomenal. Yep. I think I don't, I don't, uh, there's certain stats I saw out there. I think Derek Carr was ranked one of the top four in quarterback statistics from week one. I don't know if efficiency wise, he was number one, but he's pretty dang yep. good. Right. Um, yeah, the Saints have the number one scoring offense in the NFL right now. That's also pretty dang good, if you ask me. Uh, now, does it continue? I don't know, right? Uh, I think I think those are two really cool things. If I had to give an honorable mention, obviously, I already mentioned it. Trevor Penning, man, just, just, yeah. just Trevor. shocked me. He was really good that game. Yeah. Hopefully, he keeps it up. We'll see. Health is always a question mark with the O-line as well. Like yep. We'll see what happens moving forward there. Uh, but yeah, I mean, he looked phenomenal. He did everything you could possibly ask for him. And, and I'm starting to wonder, like, is, is Kubiak just a, just a magic man, right? Like how is the question? Yeah. yeah it's, uh, it's, it's fun to watch. So I'll tell you that much. So the yep. one thing coming out of that game though, that does concern me, I said, I would talk about that a little bit. I think, and this is, this is nitpicking here. I think I'm pointing at Dennis Allen, man. And it's not in the way that people are going to think where it's like, oh, it's Dennis Allen. We got to get him out of here. First of all, if you think that after week one, something's wrong with you. Keep watching. I always, to this day, question why the hell he gets so soft on play calling in certain situations. I mean, he comes out of the half, or maybe he's going into the half, but he, he basically asked a question about how they finished the half. And he was like, yeah, I thought we got a little soft there. I thought we should have been more aggressive on defense. Uh, some of the looks we gave him. And I'm like, who who should have been? More, you should have been more aggressive. You're the one calling the plays. What do you mean? And that's that's the part that that yeah. kind of stuck out to me. It's like, dude, just just stay on them, stay on their throat, stay on their neck. You got them, you got them uh, without any points right now going to the half, and you give up a cheap, easy field goal, give them a you know a little confidence boost going to the halftime. Now, granted, you got a big lead, but I've seen crazy things happen. Don't give them an opportunity. Mm -hmm. That's my negative. What about you? I don't really have one. No, just no. Just, just just phenomenal football. Yeah. Good. I love it. I love to hear it. Um, all right. Well, with that, let's roll into week two. Listen, we, we got the Dallas Cowboys. You kind of already got into a few things about them. They also had a big week one. Uh, they had a good win. You got your boy Dak Prescott just signed a brand new contract as he's stepping foot onto the field. Apparently, that's got to be a good little like juice up before the game. Uh, but yeah, they looked really good and they are favorites rolling into this game against the Saints. So you know, start wherever you want, but tell me what your feelings are coming in this game. Point out some things to me. Let's Definitely talk. Definitely be a tough one. Yeah. Going up against Dallas, you know, who's going to line up against CD Lamb mm -hmm. with Marshawn Lattimore in question coming in, but yeah, it's going to be Paul Center. Yeah. I, you know, I, I do question if, if, uh, if Lattimore is not going to play. I think, I think Lattimore, it's probably more rest. Um, I, at the end of the game, they mentioned his issues. Uh, but then when, when the coaches were kind of pressed on it, it was kind of just like, yeah, listen, he's fine. Uh, we just want to let him get off of it. You know, you saw some people tweet about it that are close to the team that weren't really concerned at the end of the game. But now it seems like going into the week, more people are talking about it. He has so. practiced two days in a row. So it's kind of yeah, you know, a little concerning. Oh, like if he's going to be out Sunday. Yeah. You know, it's not I think he's like, should he just rest? But it is a huge matchup against Dallas. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I trust this defense. I trust Dennis Allen's ability to find a cornerback on Bourbon Street if he needs to and just throw him in there and somehow yeah. he'll shut down any receiver he's matched up against unless their name's Adam Thielen. Which shout out last week, Adam Thielen being shut down. Maybe, you know, Father Time caught up with him. But uh, yeah, they they finally kept that yep. Thielen under wraps. That felt good. Uh, yeah, but week two, you know, I, I think that's a big question. Lattimore being potentially hurt. Who matches up against CD? Uh, you know, they're down a tight end who's, who's, uh, who's Dak's favorite target. I mean, yeah. Dak definitely peppers the tight ends with looks. Um, I still question their running game. You know, I know they put up a lot of points week one. I know Dak Prescott and that offense always gets rolling, but I'm wondering if this is a letdown game for them and the saints all of a sudden look like this, you know, hot new Cinderella darling of the NFL. And you start seeing them on TV every week. Should the game get flexed? No, nah, I, I don't think, think so. so. I don't think you're there yet. No, no, no you're not yet. there yet. You got to be Dallas first. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's get, let's get <laughs> past get, Dallas. You got to be we'll Dallas first. Out. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean that. So you know, I I trust that Dennis Allen is is going to give some good complex looks to to Dak Prescott. Listen, I think the pass rush is there. They had to formulate it a little bit, uh, you know, through through some some nickel 
nickel blitzes there. Uh, your boy walking away with three sacks after the game. Uh, pretty pretty phenomenal there for tied for the NFL right now. Yeah, tied for first. Uh, Lante Taylor, shout out um, for tied for first for sacks in the NFL. I kept making the joke throughout the game. I don't think anybody got it, but uh, Zach Bond was being like heralded. Uh, week one for how many sacks he got and how great he looked playing inside linebacker. I want to call out. He was not playing pass rusher. Um, but every time Alante Taylor would get a sack, I'd be like, Zach who Zach who? Cause everybody was questioning, you know, whether or not we messed up by letting Zach bond go. My point is we got pressure. Yep. Um, whether it was from Alante Taylor and anybody else. And a part of that, if I could just call it out is, uh, I, I can't even think of his name right now. The the new pass rusher we have. Uh, Chase Young. Chase Young. Yeah, yep. Chase Young just looking phenomenal. I mean, I feel like every play, I saw him pushing somebody over and getting into the backfield. Now, was he getting sacks? Not necessarily, but the man was wreaking havoc. Yeah, no, he was. So talk a little bit about that. Do you talk about uh, talk about how you see our defensive line matching up against them? Any Anything that stands out to you that, that you really want to watch in this game? More interested to watch like how our line does against their defensive line okay they can match up the test yeah yeah against demarcus lawrence micah parsons yeah i think and that's that is a very important thing to call out you know you talked about alante taylor being tied for first in sacks in the league you know right on his heels are demarcus lawrence and uh eric well, another another guy they have on the team who they both have two sacks and you know, you're not even talking about Micah Parsons in that conversation, who's also going to be causing some havoc and, and getting into the backfield, applying pressure. So, yeah, I think that's a, a massive matchup that you you have to watch and see how well Kubiak can hide some of those issues. I think it starts with running the ball. I think that's what it started with last week. I mean, they got nasty early. They were able to run the ball really well, which led to some great shot plays. Okay. Derek Carr got to show off his arm. And the, I saw one formation. It was, uh, you know, you got Derek... Jamal Williams, AK on the um, left side, mm-hmm. Olave, and then Taysom at the fullback position. Like, there's so much you can do. Yeah. What do you do with that? Like, how do you stop that? I, yeah. <laughs> like, I, I genuinely don't know. Um, and I'm excited to see that coming into this week. I think, I think players to watch this week, you're definitely going to want to watch the O line. I think it's going to rest heavy on Derek Carr this week as well. Definitely. Um, he's going to have to have another big game in, in, a, in a smart game. Can't turn the football over, right? Um, so there's some things that are that are really important. I don't know, man. I, I think that for me, another thing I'm watching is is CD Lamb. You know, um, if Marshawn plays, how well does he match up against him? Can they lock him down? And if so, is there somebody else on that Dallas offense that's going to step up? Because if not, I think honestly, I think it's an easy game for the Saints. Oh, I think so. Uh, yeah, like you were saying about their run game, like who, unless if, you know, you get a vintage like Dalvin Cook. Right. Game. Just out of nowhere. Yeah. But other than that, you know, they really don't have anybody. Yeah. I think week one, too, Dalvin Cook was not used a, a whole lot, right? Mm-hmm. Now, granted, he was just picked up, uh, but it was basically a, a one two punch of Rico, Rico Dowdle and, and old Zeke. So, uh, not putting a lot of fear into me. And maybe I eat those words, but. And usually what's got the Saints in the past is those random players always having a huge game against us. Yeah. Like it's always happened. Yeah, 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 for sure. Aside from that, what are some what are some uh, some keys to victory? We always talk about keys. I know we talk about things to watch, but what are some keys to victory? What do you think is most yeah, important? Limit the turnovers, of course. Mm-hmm. No limit the penalties. Don't make any you know dumb mistakes. Yeah, I mean, I'm always looking at turnovers. I'm always looking at the offensive line. I think one thing that I'm going to call out here as well. I'm curious the coaching matchup, right? Mm-hmm. Like the the Dennis Allen has not been known for being a great strategic head coach. Mm -hmm. And he's facing off against a guy who has been around the block. Um, There's a reason he's, he's been where he's been. He's been to Super Bowls. Um, He's, he's won some games. You know, if, if you basically uh, rip names away, him and Sean Payton look about the same on paper. Um, So how do they match up? You know, what are, what are the punches and counter punches that they've planned out that they're going to come with? It'll be a good coaching matchup for sure. Yeah. I think that that's something I'm, I'm truly looking at. Um, but yeah, that's really all I got, dude. Yeah. I'll be honest. Yeah, nice and sweet, short and sweet this week. Yep. Um, I mean, shoot, we're at we're at about 15 minutes. That's okay. Um, we had to get something out. Listen, we were a little less prepped than normal with this hurricane coming through. Uh, there was a lot of things going on in our world, but we definitely still wanted to get this out. Um, just to chat Saints for a minute and uh, you know, keep you guys in the loop. If you're not already in the know, we want you to be in the know um, and just continue to follow us everywhere. Uh, one last thing we could talk about. It's not really games related, but I just wanted to bring it up. There's a, I don't know if you've seen this. There's a, a Twitter account that um, 
I'm trying to think of the name of it, but that often will uh, put out some stories that aren't so pleasant about other people, right? Um, and they teased uh, they teased a story about the Saints today. I did just see that actually earlier. Yeah. Yeah. So, and they they made it very cryptic. You know, they've exposed a few other things, uh, a few things, um, Washington Red, uh, commanders related, almost said a bad word there, um, commanders related. Um, and there's a, you know, a lot of their sources are coming from a guy who used to work um, I think it was content or something like that for the commanders. And, uh, anyways, so they teased a story about the saints, got saints Twitter all up in arms. Obviously I was a little concerned. I was like, Oh, what's coming. We had a good week one. And now all of a sudden somebody's trying to put out our, put out our fire here. turns out it is about, uh, bounty gate, which happened. I don't know, 2009, right? How many years ago is that now? Um, and not specifically bounty gate, but bounty gate as a cover up for another scandal that I think every saints fan already knew about. And that was the, the pill popping uh, monster himself, Sean Payton, stealing pills from the uh, from the medical closet. So, um, any thoughts on that? I think for me, it was just like, wow, this is this is your story. It's, I thought it would be a lot a lot worse than that. I did too. <laughs> I was like, who didn't know about this? People don't know about this. I've known about this. This did, and it's funny though. It was funny seeing how they were framing it. Right? They were like, listen, they did this as a cover up because they were stealing pain pill opioids. They kept saying they didn't say pain pills, opioids. Um, and I do remember the story breaking about the, the pain pills a couple months before the bounty gate stuff and then bounty gate came out and then we forgot all about the pain pill thing, but I didn't think it was that big of a deal. Like, yes, it was a big deal. Uh, but I didn't think it was that big of a deal where it's like, Oh, we got to cover this up. Um, do I think that maybe they should have gotten in trouble for it? Yeah, probably. Um, I don't remember what the fallout was from that. I think there was like a suspension or two from that. I think Joe Vitt caught some flack from that. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I thought it was very interesting that that was the uh, that was a story that everybody yep. was concerned about. I thought it was gonna be a lot worse. Like, <laughs> listen, if you're gonna come at the Saints, you best not miss. All right, come at us with some other crazy stuff. There's they've done some pretty bad things in their life. There's some other stories out there that you could probably find that we will not bring up on this podcast right now. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. I just wanted to fill some dead air time to close this thing out. We appreciate you guys. You got any last thoughts before we before we close? Score it? predictions. Score predictions. Good question. Good question. So Dallas is favored by six right now, I believe it is. If I got to put it on the nose, I say the Saints cover, and not only do they cover, but they win in Dallas, and they win by three. And I think the score is, if I have to just pick a score, right? uh, I think it's going to be like 27 to 24. That's what I'm going with. What about you? It needs to be a little higher scoring. 34-31 Saints. Oh, also going with a three-point victory. Yeah, we work in threes here, fellas. Except tonight, because Sir Dave didn't join us. Missing our producer. Shout out to him. Um, yeah, cool. Uh, and there's one more thing that we we closed out last week with that we can close out this week with. And I, I promise it's the end of this thing here. Um, let's do anytime touchdown score from last week. Do you remember who your your or for for this week? Do you remember who your touchdown score was from last week? Taysom Hill. Taysom Hill. So how'd you do? You don't know if Taysom scored a touchdown? Let's see. Did he? I don't think. I also, he almost got a touchdown. I don't recall. I'm thinking of it now, and I'm like, actually, I don't think he did. He did not get a touchdown last week. He was close. Yeah. You know what? Let's shout that out right now, though. Derek Carr with three. Kamara with one. Jamal Williams with one. And Rashid, we did talk about that pass that he had to Rashid. First touchdown of the game. He dropped it. In a bucket. Yes. A yeah. beautiful pass. In a bucket. It was phenomenal. Um, yeah. Mine was uh, the running back from Carolina. I can't even think of his name right now. I'm on my fantasy team. Chuba Hubbard did not score a touchdown. So, yeah, neither one of us hit. I don't remember what Dave had. He probably hit. Did he go Kamara? I think so, yeah. I think he went Kamara. Took the easy way out. Yeah. Odds on that were, like, terrible. You won a dollar. Congrats. Uh, this week, if I have to go anytime touchdown score, I am going, I'll take Taysom Hill. But Jamal Williams. Jamal. Mm, Pikachu. I feel like we need to give him, like, an attack. Like, when he scores a touchdown, he needs to have, like, a random Pokemon attack that we just scream, right? Is there anything? Do you ever do Pokemon? A little bit, not not too bit. much. I didn't really do it. A lot of people I knew did it, and they man, I wish I had somebody here that could just shout something. Like I looked up like Bulbasaur attacks and squirt, Squirtle and I don't know. I feel like we we need to shout something when he scores a touchdown. Anyways, thank you guys. Uh, appreciate you. Uh, hopefully, you got some value out of this thing. If not, uh, we want your hot takes. Uh, we've been putting that on our Who F and Knows account, but we want that for this too. Give us all your football hot takes. Tweet at us. Tweet at me in the know. Um, follow at me in the know everywhere, whether it's on 
Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, all that stuff. This is a part of the Being the Known Network. Obviously, um, also follow Jacob's accounts, Big Easy Nation. It's on Twitter. It's on Instagram. Uh, if you're not following him on Instagram, you're one of the only ones because um, he's got a massive following there. But uh, but yeah, that's all I got for now. You got anything else? Nothing else. Awesome. We appreciate you guys. Uh, we'll see you next week. Uh, we also have, oh, one more thing. We also have a pregame and a postgame that the No does every week. It's on YouTube. If you follow the accounts, you'll also see it. So just keep an eye out for that. Uh, you'll get to see Ethan on there. He's a great guy. Till next time. Who dat?